But since we are on the topic of Giannis Antetokounmpo, let's talk the Greek freak because he makes some of our primetime action this weekend. The two-time MVP gets ready to head into the final two weeks of the regular season. And with the East being so wide open, it makes you almost forget that the Bucks are still the defending champions. So shout out to Ellis and the production team because he sent me this stat today, right? And as I thought about it, about the teams that have leveled to repeat and the teams that have been able to do so, it's been incredible that so many teams haven't been able to replicate their championships. But more, before I dive into my stat of the day, I want you to just focus on this aspect. When have we thought about Giannis, Drew Holiday and Chris Middleton having a continued period throughout this period of the season? So when the Bucks do make a return and all of their big hitters are here, I know this is gonna make you upset, but the Bucks could return to the NBA Finals. I wouldn't say that make me upset. I'd love Giannis Antetokounmpo to go out and get another championship. I love Giannis. I love the vibes that he brings. I love this Milwaukee Bucks team. But let me tell you something about the Milwaukee Bucks, JD. You're saying if and they get back together and when they all get healthy at the same time. The fact of the matter is, the regular season finishes in just over a week. There's not a lot of time left to get all back together. And then we're going to look at the roster. Brooke Lopez missed almost the entire year, and we know how important he is to the defense. P.J. Tucker was a huge part of their playoff rotation. Going into the playoffs this year, there's no P.J. Tucker there. So let's take a look back at last year. They made the final to the champions. I can't disrespect that. And I have to give the respect to the reigning champions to say they're still going to kind of ease until someone knocks them off. But I just want to look at some of the facts of the situation last year. They took out the Miami Heat in the first round, and credit to them. They could have avoided them, but they said, no, we'll play them. We'll get our revenge for the bubble. But speaking of the bubble, the Miami Heat, much like the Lakers last year, were exhausted from the NBA bubble. They lost in four games in the first round. Then you get to the second round, and it looks like the Brooklyn Nets are eliminating the Milwaukee Bucks with ease. They're absolutely eviscerating them. And then Kyrie Irving gets injured. James Harden's playing with one hamstring, and the Bucks prevail out of that series. And then you get to the Eastern Conference Finals against the Atlanta Hawks, who, let's be honest, wouldn't have even been in the Eastern Conference Finals if it wasn't for a certain point guard for the Philadelphia 76ers having a meltdown at the end of that Game 7 and refusing to try and score the basketball. So that run through the Eastern Conference last year was pretty sweet. And you get to the NBA Finals and Chris Paul's been struggling with injuries and, you know, all these things happen. And I'm not taking anything away from the Bucks. All I'm saying is the Eastern Conference this season is a lot more competitive than it was a year ago. Look at the Eastern Conference this year. You've got Kyrie now healthy, playing on the same team as Kevin Durant. You've got the Philadelphia 76ers, all new, all improved. You've got the Boston Celtics looking like they can hang with the best in the league right now. And of course, the Miami Heat, they took P.J. Tucker from Milwaukee. So now they've got a man who knows all their inside tricks. They've got a man who they can put on. You understand, Kumpo's trying to slow him down. So I'm not saying the Bucs won't be in the finals. I'm just saying it's going to be a lot more difficult because the Eastern Conference has improved by so much this season. I saved my stat of the day for BJ on purpose because I wanted you to take this in, BJ. When I first heard this, I actually had to double take. But it, right. since 1984, when they started doing 16 teams in the playoffs, if you take Phil Jackson's coach teams out of it, only five teams have repeated only five teams. This is what has happened to the rest of those teams. That shows you how difficult it is to actually do a 2 P, a 3 P, back-to-backs, whatever you want to call it. Which gives credit to you, my friend, of course, naturally, for your achievements. But what I would say is, the bigger, wider statement, do you believe when it's all said and done and all of the pieces do come back together, the Bucks will be heading back to the NBA Finals? I do believe without question, the Milwaukee Bucks will be returning back to the NBA Finals. But I have to ask my good friend, Ovi, my brother. You know why I call <laughs> Ovi son? <laughs> the, Phoenix to to Suns, the Phoenix Suns will be shining. And my brother Ovi be shining like what? The Phoenix Suns yes, are going to uh... win the NBA championship this year. But I do <laughs> believe... The Milwaukee Bucks will get back to the NBA Finals. And the reason I believe they're going to get back to the NBA Finals is because of the following. Out of all the adversity and all the things that's been going on in the season, they have been a team that has stayed drama-free, unlike what you just saw down there in Miami. You know what? There's been a couple of teams now that have just stayed the course and stayed the path. Without question, you haven't heard anything 
a peak coming out of Phoenix. They've had players get injured. They've had their backcourt, both our all-stars, Chris Paul, Devin Booker, they win. So the Phoenix Suns, they're staying the course. The Milwaukee Bucks stay in the course. You know who else is staying the course this year? The Memphis Grizzlies. Grizzlies. My man John Morant has been out, and they just keep staying the course. So I'm looking at teams, and I even got to make exception for one team, and it hurts me to say this, but you know what? I got to give the Boston Celtics credit. They've even stayed the course. They've had adversity. They That's started right. off, struggled, <laughs> and they've stayed the course. And we're going to see now they have another a little, you know, adversity going on with the Time Lord being out. But when you see teams stay the course and they find a way to get it done, they find a way to win, they find a way to compete, I think those are the teams that we have to take notice of. And I'm going to give those teams credit. I do think the Milwaukee Bucks, all when it's all said and done, will get back to the NBA Finals. But I'm rolling this year with the Phoenix Suns. They've been the best team from start to finish. And I think they will overtake and be crowned champions this year when it's all said and done. Ovi, we were speaking off camera. We spoke about something called championship DNA. We were speaking about knowing how to win. That core is still together. That core knows what it takes to get it done. And I'll quote Giannis in saying, I like the fact everyone is ignoring us. Keep ignoring us over here while we quietly do our business. It just seems like the Bucks are trying to replicate what they did last year. But do you believe they will be heading back to the finals? To be fair, you know, I'm going to piggyback on what BJ was talk- alluding to. You know, there's so much going on in the NBA this season on the West and the East. Um, and all the teams, everyone's dealing with, you know, their own little issues. Boston, they had some issues with injuries. Obviously, we know the whole deal with Philly and the Brooklyn Nets, with James Harden, Kyrie Irving. There's so much going on this year. I feel like the teams that are able to keep their head down and just get the job done are the teams that are going to go the furthest. Um, And, you know, in the East, we've seen the meltdown that's going on in Miami. We've seen James Harden hasn't been quite himself lately. We've seen, you know, Kyrie Irving and the Nets, as as much as it might sound like it's great that Kyrie's back, Kyrie is a huge piece to be throwing back into the middle of the team. A lot changes when Kyrie Irving is on the floor. Um, I feel like the Nets are 9-13 and with Kyrie playing. And that doesn't mean that Kyrie is a bad player, but like I said, there's a lot of things that change when a guy as good as Kyrie comes back into your team. A lot of adjustments have to be made. Um, Boston Celtics, they've obviously been on a roll. However, they've just had some recent injuries. And I feel like now an issue that they have had consistently over the last couple of years that I feel like they were just starting to address in a big man now, obviously, they have that problem to deal with moving forward, and we'll see how they respond to that. Um, and with all this being said, I just feel like Milwaukee Bucks, not only will they get to the finals, I feel like they'll be a little bit better when we see them in the playoffs this year because there's just that mindset of having gotten over the hump. They've done it now. They've they've achieved the ultimate goal. So I feel like now they're going back with that, that quiet confidence, that champion's confidence. So, you know, I feel like, yeah, the Bucks will be back in the finals this year. I've got a question. I've got a question for you guys. <laughs> Who's guarding Kevin Durant if the Milwaukee Bucks face the Brooklyn Nets in a playoff series? That's the question I have for you because Not- last time out, before Kyrie got injured, I'll get to that in a sec. Last time out, they won game two by 40 points. They didn't just beat the Bucks. They had them terrified. Everyone was saying the series is over up until Kyrie Irving and even in, in the game where he got injured, they were up until he turned his ankle. Okay, so you want to say Giannis is going to guard Kevin Durant. So we're going to ask Giannis yeah. to carry the scoring on offense and guard the best scorer in the NBA on defense. Also, while staying out of foul trouble, which will take him out of action in the fourth quarter, because you know Katie's crafty with it. He can draw the fouls when he wants to. Add to the fact that Giannis is best on defense when he can free roam and play that free safety position for the Milwaukee Bucks, and he can come across on the help side and block shots, alter shots, and deter people from scoring in the paint. So look at the Milwaukee Bucks offensive scheme. Your best bet isn't to have Giannis guarding the other team's best player. That's why P.J. Tucker was so important to this team, because you could give Kevin Durant a single coverage and live with the results. You could say, okay, P.J., you go guard KD, we'll live with whatever KD gets going up against you. Go get under his skin. Who's the enforcer on this team now? I think P.J. Tucker is a bigger loss to this team than a lot of people are alluding to. You know what, Mo? I got Mo, a question Mo, Mo, you, Mo, Mo. Mo. I Hold on, hold on. I got, I got one question go, for you. I got go, one go, question go, for you. Go, 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 go. My boys round up. Yeah. Do you know who's guarding KD? 
The same person that the, every other team in the league. Nobody's guarding KD. You just need, exactly. you got to put a body in front of him. Nobody is guarding KD. But you know who's guarding Giannis? Nobody's guarding Giannis. Because you don't, <laughs> you can't stop a great player. You can only hope to contain him. They need able bodies. Now, P.J. Tucker gave you great effort. P.J. Tucker will tell you, I can't guard KD. But he is a body that you can put in front of KD. And he's going to give you effort. He's going to give you energy. And they're going to miss that because they're going to need able bodies because KD can't be stopped. However, I think the game plan of the Milwaukee Bucks will be we're going to make KD take as many tough shots as we can and hope that he misses because nobody. But what I would love to see is what we all want to see. In the last two minutes, I want to see KD and Giannis being matched up and may the best man win. Now, I'm going to drop the mic on that one. Cause I can't wait. <laughs> <that. laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hey, I feel like I ain't even got too much more to say. But you know, my biggest thing on that Mo is, I don't feel like that is where the Nets are going to run into issues. They don't lose because they're not able to score the ball. The Nets don't play no defense. The Nets don't guard anyone. And they, you know, they call your they, boy. They go your boy Andre Drummond now. <laughs> oh, oh, you think he's the key? You think he's the answer? No, no, no. That's what you were saying when he joined the Lakers. Uh, no, no, no. I remember. No, but, but they're horrible. I remember on this show, horrible. people were telling me he's going to solve the Lakers' problems. And, the energy and, changed. And years, and years have gone by and lessons have been learned. Hey, we grow. We why, grow, my why does we grow. He loves receipts, in it? He loves no, 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 no. The whole thing, oh, the yeah, whole yeah, thing. Yeah. I just had to set you up for that one, my brother. <laughs> no, 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 no. But, but, but they don't guard nobody, though. You know, that, on the, you know, seriously speaking, I feel like that's the next issue. You know, they, they, they're, what, 9-13 and 13 with Kyrie on the floor, not because they can't score, not because Kyrie can't put up 60 points, not because he can't score 50, but these guys, they don't guard. And when it comes to the playoffs, um, I mean, you know, you have to play defense. And, and, and also, I feel like when we see Kyrie and, and, and KD, this season especially, just because of the inconsistency with those guys being able to be on the floor together, they've hardly been out there together, we haven't seen them run any sets. It's literally Kyrie take a turn, KD take a turn. Kyrie, and what that does is now you're, you're icing out your role, guys. And in the playoffs, we all know how important the role players are. It's not your superstars. You know, the superstars have to come and be superstars. They have to come and just do what they do. But your role players, the guys who step up, those are the guys who, you know, who are going to have to come through and make big plays. And, and it's going to have to be someone different every night. 